make it clear. I got the Lord on my side, and with Him I'm gon' ride. Yeah. I ain't never scared, never scared, ain't never scared. Hey. I got the Lord on my side, and with Him I'm gon' ride. I ain't never scared, never scared, hey. never scared. Hey. No Hello, everyone. Our Lord's peace is up on you. We welcome you all back to God's Cup of Blessings Youth Ministries broadcast. Our Almighty Heavenly Father is your host, and I am your whole co-host. Shepherdess Catherine Hunter Williams. Our broadcast is to uplift, inspire, and empower our youth to know who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, and what they both will do in their lives. Amen. Before we go any further, let us pray to our Heavenly Father in one spirit. Pray with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to pray for me and speak through me through me, giving me the directions I need as I begin to teach our Heavenly Father's God-given amazing promises of Jesus Christ's grace. Move me out of the way, Holy Spirit, and touch those who have an ear to hear, hear this word this day. And I thank you, my Heavenly Father, for giving me another day, an opportunity to spread your good news of the grace of Jesus Christ to our young people in Jesus' powerful and majestic name. Amen. As I told you on my last program, uh, there were some t technical difficulties with the, with the last, what, program 31, 30 and 31? Mm -hmm. And I prayed that on this program that we straighten it all out. And I'm going to call the devil as a liar because it seems like it's going to be all straightened out by the time um, Paul get it all down there. It'll be straightened. But if it should overlap, you'll know that we had some technical difficulties and just, you know, charge it to uh, Paul's head and not to his heart and charge it to my head and not to my heart. Because it's just sometimes things have their issues. They break down and do whatever they do, like computers. You can think that your computer's going to last forever, but it crashes. So you have to deal with what you have and work with what you have. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, moving forward, young people, get your Bibles, uh, your Bibles, your pads, and your pencils, because I always give scriptures as I'm teaching so that you can read it for yourself, and as you're reading it, speak it, and know that it is the Word of God, for none of this is to my glory, because it's all the, glo all the glory goes to our Heavenly Father, amen. You know, like some people say, she said that. No, I ain't said it. You would know exactly that it came from the Word of God. So that's why I tell you to get your Bibles, pads, and pencils so that you can write down these scriptures as we go along. All right, moving forward. We will continue with our series about the supernatural works of the Ruach HaKodesh, also known as the Holy Spirit, from the scriptures of John 14, 16 through 17. And I'm going to read it to you right quick. John 14 through 16. John 14, 16 through 17. All right. And I will ask the Father, this is Jesus talking, and he will give you another comforter, the counselor, a helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. The Verse 17, the spirit of truth whom, he will, whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take it to heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him, but you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. That is from, I'm reading this from the uh, Amplified Bible. I love the Amplified Bible because the Amplified Bible just expounds on, on the regular Holy Bible gives you better, you know, just breaks it down, um, opens up that word. So it's, it's a great Bible to have if you can get you um, a uh, Amplified Bible, which this one is the Amplified Bible, and it's the uh, Holy, Holy Bible also, but it's Amplified. Great Bible to have. All right. On our last program, we left off in Psalms 119, which is the longest chapter in the Bible. And our sweet songs about our Heavenly Father's Word. Also, did you know that the words over each chapter in Psalms, go with me to Psalms 119. Go with me right quick to Psalms 119. All right. 
I'm already there. So when you get there, I'm going to just give you a minute. But anyway, um, as I said, Psalms 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible and our sweet songs about our Heavenly Father's Word. They sing these songs, these psalms. In fact, the psalms are basically is, is, is used for singing anyway. Hallelujah. Also, did you know the words over in over each chapter in Psalms 19 is the Hebrew alphabet. If you got there, go with me to Psalms 119. And the first word you see is Aleph. Right above Psalms 119.1, you'll see the, uh, the, the letter and then you'll see the word Aleph. A-L-E-P-H. I hope y'all can see that. That's right before verse 1. Which is in uh, is the letter A in English. Then Beth comes next, which is over verse nine, nine and you'll see the uh, letter, uh, the Hebrew letter for the word Beth, which is the letter B in English. And finally Gimel, which is my favorite. Uh, psalm and I love it very much because it deals with money but it's right over verse 17 you see the word gimel and then you see the letter of the alphabet of and they call it alphabet a alphabet a-l-e-p-h-b-e-t you see the letter for it and then you see the word gimel g-i-m-e-l I'm not going to read uh, you all the words over each section of Psalms 119. But if you want to learn the Hebrew language, contact Mr. Richard Allinger at 810-232-0866. And let me tell you why I love uh, verse 17 of Psalms 119. It says, Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. If I'm not dealt with bountifully, I cannot live and keep his word. You know, you start getting all frustrated and different things start happening to you. It's a weakness where the devil can come in and attack, attack you. So I always tell him, deal bountifully with your servant so that I may live and keep your word. And then if you read the rest of it, it just opened my eyes uh, that I may behold wondrous things out of the grace of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I changed it a little bit because we're, I am, um, like I always say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. I am a grace minister. I'm not under the law. I do not live under the law. I live under grace. So some people have an issue with that. That's their issue. It's not mine. Truthfully, as long as I have been reading this Bible, I never knew what those words were or meant. Someone asked me what they were, and I was glad that I could give them the answer. I take the Hebrew classes from Mr. Allinger myself. Learning the Hebrew language has opened up the Word of God to me with a better understanding of what the Bible is actually saying. If you want to learn or to get the Hebrew, learn the Hebrew language, contact Mr. Richard Allinger at 810-232-0866. I mean, it just opens up the like the Amplified Bible, how it expounds. This just opens up the Word for me more. I'm not knocking that or saying that everybody got to take some Hebrew or everything or anything, but because the Lord will teach you. That's what the Holy Spirit does, but we'll get down to that later. All right. That's just a little diversion there and a plug for Mr. Allinger. Hello, Mr. Allinger, if you're watching the program. Now, moving forward, in verse 130 of Psalms 119, uh, it states... The unfolding of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. This verse established the basic method of our Father's illumination, his light of his word. In Psalms 119, 105, his word say, is, is, says, It is a lamp, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But I'm going to make it personal for you. It is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. You will no longer be living, I'm sorry, be guided in darkness. 
once you give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. When our Heavenly Father's word enters your spirit, it will give light and your mind to your mind. Light means a revelation and, and it gives you an understanding of our Father's word. Our Father reveals to you the secrets of Jesus Christ's resurrection and the Father's plan of salvation for you. That's what he's using me for right now, to, to give you his plan of salvation, his free salvation, and bring you, I'm a soul winner. And I, like I say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. I um, do not live under Mosaic laws. I live under the grace of Jesus Christ. If I try to mix the two, if I try to mix laws with grace, I make void everything Jesus has done for me. And I love everything Jesus has done for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, let me get back to my word. This is to reveal to, to only those who believe. And with that, what I had just said is what, you're, um, what is revealed to you is our Father reveals to you the secrets of Jesus' resurrection and our Father's plan for your salvation. And it's only to those who believe. Go with me to Ephesians 4, 23 through 4. Ephesians, which comes right after Galatians. Ephesians 4. Lord, I got so much stuff in here. Ephesians 4 through 24. There, I got it marked off. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, 23 through 24. All right. If you're there, speak with me, along with me. Ephesians 23, 24 through 24. I'm sorry. Ephesians 4, 23 through 24. All right. Speak with me as we go along. Verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. In other words, only through the power of the Holy Spirit, your spirits and minds can be changed through him, teaching you the truth. He transforms you from glory to glory, from inside out. Through the daily studying and speaking, the word of our Heavenly Father will give you directions and understanding regarding any problem that you may have in your life. This is the first method of our Heavenly Father's illumination and a starting point for you. You leave your old life of sins behind after you become a follower of Jesus Christ. The Christian life is a process. It do take, it's not something that you just jump into and, and you are automatically changed and things, you are delivered from this and money's come flowing in and it's all good. It's a process. Please remember that. The Holy Spirit will enlighten your understanding of what you're reading and speaking in the Bible, which means he will give you a clear understanding of knowing who and what he is and what he will do for you in your life. You will learn it's not you about you at all, and it's not. It's not about you at all. It's about our Heavenly Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. For these reasons, you are repeatedly told to study the word of our Heavenly Father to show yourself approved and to be able to rightly divide the word, which means don't take the word of our Father out of context, which happens, nor put your own meaning to it. If the Holy Spirit doesn't give it to you, you don't want it. The Bible does define itself, and in John 16, 13 to 14, it says, the Holy Spirit is your teacher, and he will show you things to come. Young people, as I said, I'm a minister of the grace of Jesus Christ, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The Holy Spirit is yours and my source of all truth, his word. He will give you an insight into future events. In other words, the Holy Spirit will give you what is called a word of wisdom which is the gift of the word of wisdom in, is seeing life from our Heavenly Father's perspective and not from your own understanding. Okay, the word of wisdom, one more time, is a gift of seeing life from our Heavenly Father's 
perspective and not from your own understanding. Because your own understanding might be messy. As a Christian exercises this gift, he begins to develop a fear of the Lord. And fear means to respect. This is the beginning of wisdom according to Proverbs 1 and 7. The gift of wisdom is the revealing prophetic future. It is speaking hidden truths of what is not known. It is a supernatural perspective to learn with certainty the divine meaning for accomplishing God's will in a given situation and is divinely given power to appropriate spiritual intuition and problem solving. Furthermore, this gift involves having a sense of divine direction, being led by the Holy Spirit to act appropriately in any given set of circumstances and in rightly applying knowledge. I was telling Paul earlier about uh, an issue I was having with my insurance company on my car, and they canceled it. And, of course, I'm sitting here, I've lost all this money that I have, that they have taken out of my checking and whatever. Anyway, I'm feeling all funky and stuff, and I'm praying, Lord, move this, because Satan was really messing with me. He's the accuser, and he come in attacking. It took until I left the house, uh, to come over here to Paul's, uh, to Spectacle Production, that um, I, this lady that cuts my grass, her name is Lisa, and she was not there, and I talked to her husband. And it took him to tell me that she has uh, ovarian cancer. And it just seemed, you know how you ask the Lord, uh, Lord, lift my head? It That just lift, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry for her that she has uh, ovarian cancer, and I pray that the Lord heals her. But I, my head got lifted because um, my issue wasn't about nothing. I can get up and I can function and stuff. Lisa cannot. I can pay this insurance. I can go, go get some more insurance. But Lisa may not make it through this over in cancer. You know, so I ask that y'all pray for her too. And pray for me too. That we both come through, both of them, it's our issue. Satan attacks. He's the one who uh, attacks uh, financially. He attacks us in our health. He attacks our children. He is the one who does that. None of that comes from God. God doesn't want us in poverty. He doesn't want us not healed. He doesn't want us to be, our children to be out of there uh, on the wild. It's none of this is from the Lord. It's all from this, uh, the devil. So, you know, that... When I see, heard him say that, that Lisa, uh, I asked him where she was, and he said that she uh, is in the hospital and that they say she has over in cancer. I mean, it just left me, you know. And I came and told Paul about it because to me it was a, a, a nice little testimony. Anyway, that is the wor word of wisdom, okay? And it's like a rightly applying knowledge. And that knowledge that he gave me, because uh, I asked him to lift my head, and it, I hadn't even made it out of my uh, division before I ran into Lisa's husband, and my head got lifted. Like I said, I know I'm going to make it through this. I will get some more insurance. It ain't no deal. I'm here, and I'm talking to you. I'm not laid up in some hospital bed with some serious health issues. So, like I say, pray for Lisa, but also pray for me, and I thank you for it. All right, back to moving forward and getting back to our word. Following the word of wisdom comes the word of knowledge. Now all this is the Holy Spirit which does all this. And it is also a gift and is a supernatural revelation given by the Holy Spirit of certain facts of the mind of our Heavenly Father. It's like um, something a person has done. The Holy Spirit would give you a, a word of knowledge and you know, and you know, he has done that to me and what uh, I tell the people uh, the Lord has told me, given me something to tell you that only you and him know. And now he's telling me. He will give you a word of knowledge about something a person have done, has done. Or just I lost my keys one time and I couldn't find them for nothing. I thought they was in the car. I looked all through the house and everything. The thing about me is sometimes I forget to just ask the Lord to help me with it. Just stop. But my mind be zooming. I got to get out of here. So I'm looking for the keys. But once I stopped and asked the Holy Spirit, where's my keys? He took me right to him. <laughs> he, 
That's a word of knowledge, you know, and I didn't have no problem. So that's why I'm, why I'm saying that is, and the point I'm trying to make is, when you're going through anything, stop. Don't panic. Don't go through stuff. Women, sometimes us women, we go through that kind of stuff. We are panicking this and that. But if we just stop and ask the Holy Spirit to help us, he'll work it all out. He works it all out. In fact, as I'm teaching you and telling you about this, I am feeling so good within myself that that problem, that little issue that I had, this, that, you hear what I said, little issue? It's not even an issue anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Just stop and ask the Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. He comes to your aid. Just like I told you, if you uh, uh, call out that most powerful name, Jesus Christ, when Satan is attacking, he, uh, Satan got to go. Even when you pray, Satan trembles. You know, so hey, just keep going on with the Lord and let him lead and guide you. All right, let me get back to, to uh, this moving forward, back into the Holy Spirit, because I want to get through with this series. It's been a, we've been dealing with this series for a while. The Holy Spirit is also your standby. He is Jesus just waiting for you to come to him so that you can find out how dependable and faithful he will be in your life. Excuse me, my nose is, I have a, a perpetual nose drip all year long, doesn't go away. Um, probably from some stuff that I did as a younger woman and body is messing with me right now. That happens, y'all, young folks. You think that when you're doing whatever you're doing out here, Drugs, drinking, whatever you're doing, putting stuff up your nose, and you think you're getting away with it, when you get a little older, that's when it comes down on you. Because right now, I have a perpetual nose drip. And it's, 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 it's a sinus deal, as they tell me, but I know what it's really from, from stuff I did as a young person. So I'm just telling you young people, watch what you do. Uh, what you put in your bodies before you t do it, think about it. Because you are going to get old. You're not going to stay young forever. That's for sure. Anyway, back to the moving forward. In other words, he is just waiting for an opening in your life. He is waiting for you to come to him and ask for help. To intercede, to comfort you, counsel, and give you guidance. That's, that's what I was telling you about earlier. Just stop. No matter what it is, you ill. Uh, finances is being attacked. Your children is ill. Don't panic. Just stop and ask the Lord to help you, and he will. He will give you the instructions and directions you need, and he will never lead you down the wrong path. Call on him, young people. He is there waiting for you to call. Amen? Okay, now, young people. What does knowing all this information you have received about the Holy Spirit mean to you? Now that you know and understand that he is a real person, because I've talked in past programs and told you some uh, the other attributes of, of, of the Holy Spirit, he is a person. He is not just a force or a presence or an it as someone. It told me or something told me or just a power. As I've stated earlier, you must begin to acknowledge, believe, and recognize that he is a person. I mean, you know, he talks to you. He leads you. He guides you. He doesn't lead you down the wrong path. And like I said, some people call it, it told me, or something told me to go this way, and yet I went that way, and, and turned out bad for me when I went that way. He is not an it, or he's not a something. He is a person. And you must begin to know and acknowledge in your spirit that he is true, that he exists, and that he is real, and that he can speak to you and is praying for you right now as I'm speaking to you, just, just as our Lord Jesus Christ is praying for you as well. He will teach and guide you into what you need to know. He will reveal the truth to you because the Holy Spirit is is the spirit of truth. All right, my time is out. We will pick this up on our next program. I was just finna ask you how was I doing on my time, Paul. Okay. 
anyone that has not received or accepted, I'm sorry, accepted our Lord Jesus Christ, free gift of salvation. As I told you before, I am a minister of the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ, and I'm not ashamed of it. I know what the grace of Jesus Christ is about. I know what law does, as I've told you before in other program laws. The laws of Moses is condemnation, makes you feel guilty and ashamed. And that's what a lot of those people are doing, or pastors up in the churches and Bible teachers and everything in the churches are doing, keeping you under condemnation. Jesus does not condemn. He removed us from condemnation through his grace. So I am trying to get you to come to Jesus. Hallelujah. You cannot mix the laws with grace. If you mix the laws with grace, you void everything Jesus has done. You got, cannot do it. Hallelujah. Amen to that. You just can't do it, people. You got to just either be with Jesus and with his grace. Uh, I know some people are so controlled, they have to be controlled by the grace. I mean, by the laws. They can't move without the laws. They, the laws is good. I'm not knocking them. And we'll talk about that on another program. But Jesus died for us to have his grace. He died for us to give us this uh, uh, free gift of salvation, which means his gift of delivering you from the dangers of sin. See, that oh, I, I can't talk about it because then it take up my time. Today I want you to know the time is now to make your decision. Don't wait until tomorrow because tomorrow might be too late. To receive Jesus Christ's salvation, speak this prayer with me and begin a whole new life in Christ Jesus. Put your hand over your heart and I want like a pledge of allegiance. You're making a pledge to the Lord. You're making a vow. And speak these words along with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart with your unmerited favor which is grace. I make you my Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. That's it. Just those few words, young people. Now the Holy Spirit is alive and dwelling within you. 30 seconds? How did four minutes go by that fast? <laughs> wow. Okay, he will begin transforming your mind from the inside out, getting rid of all those funky thoughts you have. And you will begin to receive higher and right thoughts, which produce right believing and right living. And you will start seeing some good things Jesus has in store for you. Okay, I'm running out of time. You told me I got three seconds? 30. 30 seconds? Okay. Let us pray. My Lord Jesus, I pray that all the young people who have been watching my program today have an ear to hear and have heard what the Spirit has said. That there is power in the name of Jesus. As always, I want to thank you all who have watched our program today. And until I see you again, let Jesus reveal to you his agape love, his type of love, his agape type of love. Let his face radiate his wonderful countenance shining upon you along with his supernatural grace, mercy, wholeness, healing, and deliverance, which brings complete wellness into your life. Learn the truth about our Heavenly Father's gospel of grace to stay free mentally and spiritually. Be always Holy Spirit led and have a God blessed, full of grace and safe day today. Shalom, which means peace. Amen and hallelujah. See you on the next program. Uh huh. But God will get his glory. That's right.